Pourquoi est-ce que innocent Anes a famaï bibito It was a remarkable day with friends and family coming together to celebrate the couple's union. But what appeared to be a dream day quickly turned into a nightmare. C'était difficile. On avait encore notre vie à mener ensemble. As the bride faced the ultimate sorrow with the groom's unexpected death just hours after their wedding, but how is that even possible? Is it jealousy from their village? Or is there another reason for her husband's tragic death? Today, we're back in the vibrant town of Goma, a place we've featured before for its lavish and extraordinary wedding stories. Yet, this story takes a different, darker turn. Meet a bride who faced the unthinkable, losing her groom on their very wedding day. My name is Delicia Husso, and I reside here in Goma. My beloved husband was Christian. We experienced a magical wedding day. During our celebrations, when we looked into each other's eyes, it felt as if time stood still. We exchanged vows, promising our lifelong love and commitment. However, shortly after our wedding, Christian disappeared. He had a meeting and left to attend it. I waited all day for his return, but he did not come back, nor did he reach out. After a day without any word from him, concern started to set in. By the second day, anxiety took over, and we began searching for him, asking if anyone had seen him. Despite our efforts, he was nowhere to be found. The notice for the missing person was created and shared on social media, news channels, and with the police. The search started and his photo was shared widely. Delise was scared. She felt deep inside that things might be worse than they appeared. She tried calling him many times, but he didn't answer, and eventually his phone was turned off making things even more worrying. Later, the investigation uncovered some shocking truths that would break her heart forever. We were told that a man was killed because the local authorities mistakenly thought he was part of the M23 rebels. There were a lot of rumors, so I sent some people to check if it was really him. Neighbors and family members went to the place and confirmed that it was indeed the body of Christian, my husband, who had been killed unfairly. There were also rumors that he was wrongly identified as a thief in a distant neighborhood where no one knew him, leading to his death as a form of punishment. But none of this made sense to me. My husband was a decent man and it was impossible for him to be mistaken for a thief. When life seems unfair, it's okay to feel sad or want to quit. But even in tough times, we should stay hopeful. When things are really hard, that's when change can start. And from bad things, good things can come. Let's also remember to send comfort to Dallas and her family during this hard time. It's always hard to talk about things when you're unsure because I wasn't there and no one really knows what happened. What made it worse was that there was no further investigation, no autopsy, and his cause of death remains unknown. But one thing was sure, the body was his. Dressed in clothes and shoes I easily recognized, along with the wedding ring he always wore. We learned that he had been dead for five days and had been buried hastily in a distant area where nobody knew him. To give him a proper farewell, 
as his family, we had his body dug up and reburied in a closer and more suitable place for a respectful goodbye. Fort Rice is her older sister and runs a small bar where she sells beer and soft drinks to make a living. Like anyone else, she was heartbroken to hear about the death of her brother-in-law, who died under mysterious circumstances that, to this day, no one can fully explain. My name is Fortis Yahusa, and Delise is my younger sister. I was deeply saddened by our misfortune. You can imagine the pain my sister feels after her wedding turned out so differently from what we all expected. We all hoped for a happy, loving family, but life has proven to be harsh and unpredictable. It's been four months since the tragedy, and I would say that my sister hasn't yet come to terms with what happened. But as her sister, I always try to be there for her, offering comfort in every way I can. We make sure she feels the family's love and support. Sometimes she tries to act as if she's okay, but we know she's not, and that's why we're here for her. Today is four months since her husband passed away, and Elise is on her way to visit him. She visits every month to pay her respects and share a few words with him about feeling alone in this world and how she never got the chance to say goodbye. Since my husband passed away, I've been filled with questions like why do good people have to die and why so soon anyone could see from his pictures that he was an incredibly humble man. A few months after he died, I had our first child and now I have a baby who will never meet his father and my husband never got to see his child. On top of this, I don't have a job. He was the only one working and now I'm trying to make ends meet and raise our child on my own. But with prayer and my family's support, I found the strength to keep going and I believe things will get better. This story shows us that life is a short journey full of unknowns. We are just travelers moving through life, facing different challenges every day. So we shouldn't carry the weight of past regrets or future worries. Instead, we should live fully in the present, enjoying and being thankful for each day. Life is brief, and the only time we really have is this moment, right now. Thank you for watching. I am Simon Greenwood, and this is Anfrimax English. Please remember to subscribe. <laughs>